Good morning. morning. Welcome to Southern United Methodist Church. My name is Marcella German, and I'm one of your pastors, and I'm delighted to see your faces this Sunday. A few announcements for today. In your pews, you have the black folder, and I, at this time, I would like for you to take that folder, pass it around, so that we can record our attendance. It's, it's very, very important to do that so that we at the office know um, who we are missing uh, and who has been here. So please do that. And also on, in that folder, uh, there is a yellow card. And that yellow card um, is, is like a prayer concern type of thing. So if you, if you have a prayer that you want us to be praying for you or you want to call or anything, suggestions even, or it's green now, I guess. Uh, it was yellow at some point. So um, I'm becoming daltonic. So anyhow, whatever color it is, there is a prayer card thing. So fill it out if you... Uh, need prayers, or you have suggestions so that we will know. At this time, I want to invite Linda Buczynski, who is um, the head of our church council, and I, uh, she has a very, very good announcement for you this morning. Hi, good morning. I think most of you know me. Um, as Marcel said, I'm Linda Budzinski. I'm actually sort of filling in for Andy Andereg this morning, who is the chair of Visioning. Visioning has been working hard all year to try to find ways to help us fulfill our mission to bring people closer in their journey with Christ. And um, one of the important things that they are doing is this survey. Some of you may have already filled it out online or in, on paper. Um, but if you have not, please take some time to fill it out. And actually, even if you have, but you've thought of new things you want to say, um, vote early, vote often. Why should the Chicagoans have all the fun? Um, 
because we really want to know, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of a, a background on what we, we kept it, they kept it to like, you know, two or three questions, mainly because they wanted to keep it short so people would answer. But they really do want to know all your thoughts. So if you've got more to say, please, you know, uh, use the back of the paper, um, say, say as much as you want. Um, but their thoughts were, what can we do, first of all, for everyone who is a member of the church or a regular visitor to the church and belongs to the church and for our current church family to um, you know, have activities that are of interest to you and that will um, help you in your journey to become um, cr closer to Christ. But then also, what are some ways that we might be able to invite others into our church? Um, you know, sometimes it might be difficult to invite someone to attend Sunday morning service with you, or if you do invite them, they might be reluctant for you know, a variety of reasons that, that, that maybe they're, they're just shy or they've had a bad experience. But there are other things we could do that would help them to get to know our church family a little bit. So you know, if we, I, I'm kind of intrigued by the darts team idea. Um, you know, it might be easy to invite somebody to join you on whatever Tuesday nights for a darts team uh, tournament. And um, you know, that way they get to meet some others in the church and we get to share Christ's love with them in a different way. And, um, you know, and, and, and maybe then it becomes a little easier to invite them to join us on Sunday morning. So please take time. There's, um, they're in the uh, narthex. Um, I'll be back there um, after the service with them as well. And um, there's also the online version. But if you've got a lot to say, it might be easy, just easier to use the, uh, the, the paper version. So hope you'll fill it out. Thank you. I hope everybody has that yellow paper, right? Like, come on, let's do this. <laughs> that you can fill it out. Uh, another announcement that I want to um, remind you of is that the church garden uh, needs people uh, to water and harvest uh, the, the produce that is producing. So please let us know if you are interested in helping us on that capacity. And the UMW is having a meeting after this service um, in the hall or online. So feel free to do it either way. And don't forget, next Saturday is Grace Ministries, this uh, wonderful outreach that we do to the community. So if you have your Saturday morning um, off, come join us. Uh, it is a blessing to serve. And as you notice this morning, there is a beautiful prayer quilt near the, near the piano. And I encourage everyone, when you come uh, to take communion, to take, to take a moment or after the service to pray for Penny Clark. This is uh, um, a prayer quilt for her. She is a friend of Maine Ward, and Penny is having hip surgery on Friday, August the 12th. So prayers for a successful surgery and healings as as she gets better. So all those are appreciated. So let us pray for, for Penny and for our hearts and our minds to be uh, with her during this. So dear Lord, we praise your name because you are Jehovah Rapha, our healer, to whom we call today to have mercy on Penny and that you can give your wisdom to her doctors and nurses as they will perform surgery on her. Lord, let the gift of science be a gift to Penny. And may you give strength and hope on those days when she experiences despair and pain. Always, Lord, be her guide, her light. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. And now let us prepare our hearts and our minds. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Would you stand and join me in the call to worship? Lord, we come to worship you. We want to give you all our thanks and praise. We 
We ask ourselves, are you there listening to our prayers and cries? We are trusting you, but the wait is hard. This morning, Lord, assure us of what we cannot always see, a conviction of the hope we have in you and your power. We want to be faith-filled and confident in your abiding and unfailing love for all of us. Amen. Would you remain standing as you are able for the hymn, uh, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, number 127. crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Lord, creator and maker of this earth, we thank you for the beauty of a new day, the opportunity of being together to praise you 
as a community that has faith in you and in your promises. Sundays are meaningful days for us who believe in the power of your sanctification. Today, as every Sunday, we stand on God's promises with millions of believers and a cloud of witnesses whose faith reminds us that said, in the beginning of time, you have faithfully invited us to our relationship with you. But Lord, we have rebelled against your will. We have experienced pain, devastation, loss, and spiritual death. Lord, we want to accept your son Jesus in our lives. We want him to become the constant beacon that guides us to see your glorious reality of salvation. It is by our faith in you that we stand here this morning praying together for those who need your healing touch in their illnesses of mind and body. Lord, provide the daily bread for everyone who is hungry and thirsty for your holy presence or is struggling in this economy and having doubts. Father, many of us have a strong faith, but there are days when we struggle to believe. There is so much pain and loss around us. Lord, help us in our unbelief so that we have a clear path to your salvation. Always cover us with the hedge of your protection and blessing. Always cover us with your blood and your peace. Let us be like Abraham, believers of what we cannot yet see, but witnesses who trust in your name and your promises. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for always inviting us to hope and desire God's presence so that we can can give our struggles to Jesus, in whose name we pray by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks be to God. This is the time in our service when we have the opportunity to give back to God what belongs to God. God has been faithful to us. God has given us more than we can deserve. So I invite you this morning to give faithfully and joyfully to this your church. Let us pray for those offerings that will be received um, as we come back, come to uh, receive communion, or when you finish your the, the service, you can drop them in, in the envelope. So let us pray for that offering. Dear Lord, we, we, give you, we give thanks to you for the opportunity to give back to you what belongs to you. And Lord, um, I pray that we can be joyful givers, faithful disciples that uh, praise you and honor you by our spiritual discipline of giving from our finances. Thank you, Lord, for all those who are having a uh, hard time. Uh, I pray, Lord, that, that you be their constant presence and that you bless them in their struggles and you give them what they need. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Scripture this morning is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 16. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, be with us today. Help us to hear your words through the sermon from Pastor Marcella. Help us to always keep you forefront and first in our lives. Amen. I know you all have heard the phrase, born again. Growing up, this was a phrase that I often heard being used by my relatives who were Protestants. Remember, I was raised as Catholic, and this way of speaking was new to me. They were always speaking of good news, hope and Jesus Christ as the bridge who brings us back to God, saving us from living in sin and destruction. It made a lot of sense. We human beings are lost. We need redemption, and Jesus was the one to save us. But there was a very important word that was part of that equation of salvation. Faith. Faith specifically in Jesus Christ. The author of Hebrews 
tells us that faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we can't not see. The author of Hebrews tells us that faith shows the reality that we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. To be born again for born again for us, United Methodists, um, we don't use that term, right? So for us, and in the eyes of our founder, John Wesley, our salvation is not instantaneously. For us, and our theology, it is a process. We be growing in salvation and sanctification. But there is a moment on that process of sanctification that we are awake. We realize the grace of God that is before us. And John Wesley called that new birth. New birth opens the door to the reality of a life in Jesus Christ, who cleanses us, forgives us, and gives us, as sinners, hope for something better than the life we are currently experiencing. Faith in Jesus Christ offers us new hope that propels change in ourselves and hopefully in those who are around us. That is a new birth. The Apostle Paul, as you all know, was against Christianity. He persecuted the uh, followers of the way. And it was not until he understood that there was a new reality waiting for him that he was open to the work of Christ in his life. Christ who forgave him and allowed him to be the one, not the one, one of the examples of being a faithful disciple in our Christian heritage. Have you heard the term virtual reality or metaverse? Anybody? Virtual reality? Have you heard that? This is something that has gained popularity in the past few years. And in the beginning, I was very, very suspicious of it. And I am for, I'm still uh, very suspicious for many other reasons, but that is not the point. If you have heard of, if you have not heard of virtual reality, I want to give you the definition of virtual reality. So the definition is that the virtual reality is, is a computer-generated stimulation of a three-dimensional image or environment that can be interacted with in a seemingly real or physical way by a person using electronic equipment, such as a helmet, with a screen inside and gloves fitted with sensors. So these little things that I have here, it doesn't belong to me, okay? Don't, don't think I spend my time in the virtual reality. So, so this is called an Oculus. And this has a screen here and we can put it on and we can see a virtual reality. And let me tell you one thing. It is unbelievable. <laughs> the first time I put it on, I was amazed to be able to be in Venice and Spain and New Zealand, experiencing in 3D those places where I have never been. Why, why am I talking about this? 
I am glad you're asking yourself that question. It is because I want to compare the virtual reality experience with the faithful reality we all can experience if we allow ourselves to be immersed in the biblical reality. We have this book that is called our Bible, which contains the promises of everlasting life. When we believe in Christ as our Savior and our Redeemer and Sustainer, these promises make a 3D reality. Christ is the bridge between our current reality of desperation, insecurity, lack of forgiveness, criticism, self-pity, lack of humility, and privilege. The bridge of life to a life that is filled with humility, self-giving, acceptance, and control of our current circumstances. Christ provides us with the strength and peace that God promised to his people in this book. These promises are available to anyone who desires to experience eternal life, abundant grace, love, strength, so that we can live on this earth as God has intended. We just heard the scripture mentioning Abraham, whose circumstances were somewhat uncertain. For years, he and Sarah were unable to have children. In those times, those circumstances put them on a list of those people with whom God was not pleased. Therefore, infertility was a burden and a punishment. But God's promises for him were different from the current reality they were living. Abraham was promised to become the father of nations that will become as many as the stars in the sky. Abraham's faith in the promise let him, let him experience a new reality that was within his reach to step into that promise. We are enduring difficult times as a nation, as a church, as individuals. And today's passage is encouraging us to be faithful, to embrace a pattern of faithful living that will draw us near, near to God with sincere hearts, with the assurance that God is present in our current tribulations. God is comforting us in our troubles so that we can comfort each other. We all need to be saved from the power of sin and destruction that is part of our current reality. We all need to be moved, invited, to put the oculus of the gospel so that we can experience a new reality that offers a new life in Jesus, our priest, our Redeemer, the one who has paid all offenses, all inequities, all faults, all transgressions. The author of the book of Hebrews make us, give us two statements about faith. And he says in those uh, verses, there are two words in the Greek. They are essential to understand faith for what he writes. So the first word that he's telling us what faith is, is saying apostasis. 
So apostasis, or eupostasis, don't know, um, it means substance, essence, foundation. So what he's saying is that we must let Jesus become the substance of our lives, the essence of our lives, the foundation in which we can stand firm until the end of our days. So that we let Jesus become our priest, our hope, our rock, our teacher, our example, and our redeemer of those circumstances that we are living in. The author is also saying that faith is elekos. Elekos. Which can be translated from the Greek to be the evidence, the proof, the conviction that help us to bring the light and believe all the things that we have difficulty seeing or doubting. Faith help us to trust in God's plans and promises for us, God's people. Today's invitation is to step in the virtual reality that a life in Christ offers, to let him be our strength on those days when we feel weak, to let him give us rest when we are tired and we feel defeated, and to let him to be our provider to all of the needs that we have physically, mentally, and emotionally. We, we must let him be the answer to all of our prayers and believe that everything will work out for good even when things do not seem good at the moment. That is how we are trusting in God's promises. Friends, we are a work in progress. Our realities, our lives, and our paths to salvation and sanctification are a work in progress. Today we are reminded that because of our faith in Jesus, we can believe in what we have not seen yet. The work of, of God is in front of our eyes. We can see it because we believe it. I see Venice and New Zealand. New Zealand, when I put these goggles, those lenses, believing that I'm there in that virtual reality. But that is not reality. God's promises are real. We all have seen miracles, and we know that we can see the light in our darkest moments that we can see more that we are currently experiencing. Believe in God's promises. Have the assurance of those who went before us and are now enjoying the fully reality or the full reality of everlasting life. Paul says it very well in his letter to the Corinthians when he talks about what we perceive by being on this earth here and now as humans. He says, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child and I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we only see a reflection in the mirror. Then we shall see face to face clearly. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully. Even as I am fully known. We grow in faith. We grow in attaining our salvation. We let God reveal his grace and power into our lives. And we let God know us. 
This dance is the beauty of learning to live faithfully on this earth. Friends, God created the reality of salvation to redeem this fallen world. He sent us Jesus so that we can cross the bridge and be safe from sin and be able to experience a new birth. Believe that in Jesus and with Jesus all things are possible. Put on the oculus of the gospel and see the world to different lenses. Allow yourself to love your enemies. Accept the unknown. Be joyful in difficult circumstances and be hopeful because greater things are coming for those who trust in the Lord and in his mighty power to save and redeem. Amen and amen. Christ, our Lord, invites us to his table. He invites all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your will. We have loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us for prayer. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us hear now these words. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is it he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and make with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body that has been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink all from this. This is my blood of a new covenant. Pour out for many and for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, 
we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Put out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ come in final victory and we feast in his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ that has been broken for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. And this is the cup, the cup of our salvation. At this time, I want to invite the people who are helping serve in communion to come forward.
Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to stand and let us sing our last hymn, Give to the Winds Thy Fears. invite us to put the oculus of the gospel so that we can see the reality that we can experience in Jesus so that we can love our enemies forgive those who are harm us serve others and hope that our current circumstances will be different may the Lord be with you always and that you always feel his presence guiding you. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>